If you've watched, well, two of my videos, you could probably guess that I'm a fan of boomer shooters. I am, in fact, one of those people. <laughs> Over the past couple of years, I have played my fair share of games in this genre and have my own opinions on them. This video will express those opinions in an easy to understand manner that anyone smarter than a goldfish could enjoy. Oh. We'll be going through this tier list one tier at a time, highlighting why I put specific games in certain tiers. This video will also kind of function like a bunch of mini reviews, but I'm not going to be discussing everything a game has to offer. With that, let's get on to F tier. The F stands for FUCK! Because that's what I said many times while playing these games. The first one we have is... Nightmare Reaper. Ooh, have I got some shit to say about this one. This game is frustrating me more than any other game I've probably ever played, so let's go over it. It's a boomer shooter that has many roguelite elements. It sounds fun on paper, but Fuck! Hey, it's like the tier, get it? This combination of genres does not work, at least not for very long. So you'll only start a level with one weapon, and as you kill enemies, they'll drop more. Okay, sounds pretty fun so far. Well, when you leave the level, you pick one weapon, one, uno, uno. and every other one gets sold. What for, you may ask? Money! What do you use the money for? Useless fucking upgrades, that's what. You'll dump thousands of coins into what amounts to be negligible stat increases that won't matter when the level spawns enemies that kill you faster than you can swing your stupid fucking sword at and, ooh, look at me, I got the sword, I can swing it around. <laughs> bop, 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 bop. And if you thought the worthless weapons were annoying, oh, 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 you ain't seen nothing yet. Every single level is randomly generated. All 80 of them. This is by far the worst part of the game. I tried. I really did. I played it for like 15 hours, but good god, I could not do 80 levels of random terrain, random enemies, random guns. It just got boring. I know they added a mode that makes the game shorter, but I'm critiquing what I played and how I felt when I played it. Bad video game! Next game! Oh, it's Project Warlock. This one. It's fine. This one initially pissed me off a lot when I first tried playing it on normal difficulty because it has a live system where once you run out of lives, you start the whole episode over. Or, if it's the hardest difficulty, the whole damn game. I was playing on normal and got to the final boss of the first episode and lost all my lives to it and was then forced to restart the episode. This, naturally, made me a little angry. I took a break from it and came back to play it on the easiest difficulty, where the only real difference is no live system. Now, going through the game is... well... It's fine. It has a lot of interesting ideas, but the problem is the gameplay isn't varied enough to warrant the amount of levels that are here. Which is weird to say because there's magic guns and melee weapons, but most of your weapons just kind of suck dick. There's stat and weapon upgrades so you can make builds, but this just becomes a dump truck simulator because you'll dump all your points into one or two stats and only get upgrades on certain things. When I played, I put most of my stat points into strength and primarily used the axe weapon along with the sword when it was added. You know why? Because it kills enemies in one to two hits. Every other form of damage becomes redundant. Why would I waste a couple seconds shooting continuously at one enemy when I can just kill it with one click? And the levels, dear lord, they're fucking boring! There's no verticality at all, like the y-axis literally does not exist unless there's an elevator. So most levels are on one flat plane divided into segments by walls. This can actually make it hard to navigate sometimes because you don't remember much of the level from just walking forward and turning corners. Overall, this game is just not the best. Whatever out of 10. F tier! Fuck, 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 fuck! There is no D tier because I want to emphasize how bad Project Warlock and Nightmare Reaper are. Fuck. C tier. Now we're at C tier. This stands for C, these are alright, which, yeah, they're pretty good. At the lowest point is Impaler, which I just did a micro review for the last upload. Go watch it. <laughs> Impaler can be a good time until you get to the late game. See, the dev kept updating the game and eventually doubled the length from 10 levels to 20. When I was recording for the micro review, I got to level 18 and died. Then I got to it again, and died again. This shit was just annoying. You've got walls that damage you with the most annoying enemies in the game, and they have shields, and this stupid fucking jar steals any healing you get if you can actually kill these fuckers. ANNOYING! Next game! DOOM! We like Doom. Everyone likes Doom. All-time classic, made the genre popular, still has a massive community dedicated to it, even to this day. 30 years later. So why put it in C tier? Glad you asked. I think every game above it on this tier list has taken what this game started and done it better in some way. It's got a wonderful soundtrack, pretty awesome guns, and some cool enemies, but the levels get a little eh at times, and there wasn't much variety in what monsters you encountered. This was all fixed in Doom 2! Now we're talking. This is almost the same as Doom 1, but 
double the amount of monsters, a new super shotgun, everyone's new favorite gun for forever, and more interesting levels. Doom 2 really does outdo the first in every way, but still also has sort of the same problems as the first. Very influential, but I still feel that everything above it on this list has outdone it. Next, we got Blood. I got some mixed feelings on this one. It's got better levels in Doom 2, mainly from being a build engine title, and I think the arsenal weapons is a little more interesting. The biggest downside, though, this game is fucking hard. I've never beaten the game, let alone the first episode, and it's pretty rare for me to not finish a game anymore. Blood does not fuck around. You better be in it to win it, or... Bye! Bye -bye! B tier. Starting off B tier, we got Post Void, another game I've already reviewed. Go watch it, that'd be pretty neat. I won't say much here because I've already reviewed it, but I will say it's pretty damn fun. I rank it above all the games in C tier simply because I had more fun with it, even if I've played it less. It's just a good time all around. Next is Hrot. I don't want to say much on this yet because I do plan on giving it its own review, but I will say it's pretty good. I like the weapons and levels are very atmospheric, but the lack of any story makes it a little hard to get invested. NEXT GAME! Oh, now we're talking. The first Quake, the original successor to Doom and one of my favorite shooters of the 90s. This is just a good time all around. We got a wonderful set of weapons with the most powerful being the explosives and a great cast of enemies. Sure, the levels might be more brown than the average shooter from 2009, but it don't matter. This is Quake, bitch. We don't care about any other color scheme. We blowing shit up. Pressing buttons, killing shamblers with an axe. I actually did that once. Fuck yeah! Moving on, I would like to share with you an ancient Chinese secret. Pelting people with bullets is fun. Shadow Warrior understands this quite well. Shadow Warrior is interesting when compared to its contemporaries because of the sheer silliness that occurs. For one thing, there is no pistol. Instead, you'll start with a sword that kills these ninja enemies in one swing, at least on normal difficulty. You also get shurikens, which are fine, but soon you get twin Uzis, and these things are great. They only hold 200 bullets, but this actually works quite well because the game seems to have a glass cannon designed for everything, including you. Everything does huge damage, but nothing has very much health. This makes the Uzis work well because you may go through the ammo quick, but you'll also replenish it just as quick, since it's a fairly common drop from enemies. Not much else I want to say on it, it's just a good time. Now we've got a true successor to Quake, Wrath, Aeon of Ruin. It's not finished yet, but that's fine. We don't care about the game being done, we care about the game being good. This game apparently runs on the same engine as the original Quake, but you can hardly tell because these environments are much more detailed and colorful than Quake. The baddest dude to ever toed, Duke Nukem had a very good start in the 90s, and then fucked it all up in the 2000s, but that game doesn't exist to me. The only Duke that matters is the one that's killing alien bastards at his local McDonald's. This is definitely my favorite of the games in B tier, that's why it's at the top, because it's just so damn fun. Everything about it is just made to be as cool as possible, and it achieves that. Every weapon, from the pistol to the devastator, kicks ass in the raddest of ways. The enemies are all fucking aliens, which is cool, until these guys show up. And the levels have that build engine charm that makes it seem less like a video game level and more like a real place. Very immersive, very cash money. End of B tier, A tier. We've arrived at A tier, which stands for ass alting my dopamine receptors, cause this shit's awesome. First, we've got Dread Templar, another game I plan on reviewing in the near future. I feel like this one is kind of slept on. I wouldn't say it's a dusk killer, but it definitely hooked me enough to do a whole playthrough. What is nice is that in a game full of demons, we finally play as a guy who is specifically a demon hunter. How neat. Back to the build engine with Yi, now we're at Ion Fury. For being a modern day build engine game, it came out really good. I think this just goes to show how actually good the build engine was for the time, even if this game uses a modified version of it. I would say this plays most like Duke Nukem, but there's a lot more impact from the weapons. They're all actually pretty unique, with weapons such as the Ion Bow, Bowling Bombs, and the Lover Boy being twists on traditional boomer shooter weaponry. The environments are nice too, with a lot of cyberpunk themed city environments, and just like all the other build engine games, has immersive interactables like light switches to, well, add immersion. It's also nice to have a protagonist that actually speaks, even if some of the one-liners do start to wear out their welcome. Overall, woman out of 10. Now, can anyone tell me what P stands for? It's not a secret ranking on this tier list, I can tell you that much. No, it actually stands for PUSSY! I jest, I jest. In this case, P stands for Proteus, which I like a lot. Fair warning, this is the part of the video where I just kind of start doing a lot of ass kissing for each of the games listed, so be prepared for a lot of I sure did like it a lot. Proteus is probably the closest thing to being a modern day Doom that we've ever gotten. It has a similar plot of alien teleportation, except instead of it being demons, it's just aliens from another dimension. It also starts with very sci-fi locations, the typical space stations and such, and then later on it turns into interdimensional travel, and eventually it just 
just kind of ends. And it's a little cryptic with its story, but that doesn't stop it from being fun nonetheless. My biggest gripe is that a lot of the guns become redundant. So you'll start with a pistol, right? Okay, pretty typical boomy shooty. Well, a little later, you get twin SMGs. These effectively replace the pistol because they use the same ammo type, but have a faster output of damage, which really sucks because I love the pistol in this game. It's honestly one of my favorites because unlike pistols in other games, it doesn't feel like a nerf gun. Then eventually you'll replace your shotgun with a super shotgun and you'll replace your SMGs with a chain gun. This happens for every weapon, which really sucks because a lot of these are really cool, but you just don't get as much time with them because you'll eventually get a replacement. Other than the weapon redundancy though, this game is just solid all around. Oh, and by the way, this is the third game on this list so far to be composed by Andrew Holschel. We'll mention him some more later. This next one is kind of an outlier as it comes from a series that didn't start as boomer shooters and still isn't. This of course is Postal Brain Damaged. What makes this game so great is that it manages to keep the postal style humor while also being a competent boomer shooter. What makes the game work especially well from a lore standpoint is that from the beginning it's a dream. It takes this idea and goes wild with it, making very unique looking locations. This is especially evident in the first levels of episode 1 and 2. Another thing to note, the weapons in this game are just plain silly. We've got the not so smart pistol, the super hooker shotgun, the brain fucker gun 69,000, the penetrator, the pussy blower, and <sighs> this one. Yeah, this is one thing that people complain about when it comes to PBD. The humor is very much of the time that the game was made, much like the other Postal games, but unfortunately, this time around it happened to be cringe Reddit shit that makes the rounds through most of social media. This led to at least two good things. The level themed around conventions and how awful the people that go to them are, and the fact that the Karunga virus is a boss. Yeah, you can tell this was developed through 2020 and 2021. S tier. We're finally here, the top of the tier list, S rank, which stands for shitting myself because I haven't left my chair gaming. This tier is a little more unique than the others because I more or less consider all the games here to be equal, but I also consider them to be the best of the best. So first up, we've got Turbo Overkill, where you play as Speed the Sneed Jason and his epic AI partner. I actually didn't start this one until a little before writing the script, but it has absolutely blown me away. That's a Halo 2 reference. Reason. This shit rocks. You get a pretty standard arsenal of pistols, Uzi, shotgun, SSG, minigun, rocket launcher, and plasma gun, but what matters is their alt fires. These shake shit up, and I mean like violently, like a blender type of shaking. The pistols get a smart aim mode, the SSG becomes a grenade launcher, and the minigun just turns into a flamethrower. Yeah, it's just two guns for the price of one. Fucking radical. On top of that, your slide does huge damage to enemies because the character you play as is heavily cybernetically augmented and has a chainsaw in his leg. Plus, yeah, there's more. Eventually, you get micro-missiles that launch from your left arm, and they do huge damage. And if they didn't die, they take a massive blow to the ego because he flips the birdie to him when he's done launching the missiles. I cannot recommend this one enough. I'll definitely be doing a full-length review on it when the third episode is finished. But as it is right now, this game is just fucking insane. Go buy it, go play it. Now, I'm sure you saw this coming, but the last three in this tier list are the New Blood Trilogy. I mean, what can I say? They're doing God's work over there at New Blood HQ, making all these wonderful games. First of all, let's talk about Ultra Kill. Yes, I have reviewed it before, and I may re-review it once it's fully released, because I fucking hate those two old videos. They're just shit compared to my new ones, but anyhow. Ultra Kill gets an S rank for me just because it stands out from the crowd so much. It separates itself from the boomer shooter genre because it's a blend of that and character action. So there's a style meter and crazy movement tech. The bosses aren't actual challenges and not just big enemies you shoot for a long time. They have attack patterns and parryable attacks and weak spots. And the music, dear lord the music. This may be one of my favorite game soundtracks ever. It has so many different themes, factory, desert, water, uh, hell, but they do so much more than just fit the idea of those themes, they expand on it. I imagine once this game is finished, it'll be one of the best shooters just in general with how much shit there is to do and how replayable it is. Really, that's something that I don't think a lot of people consider when they buy new games. Does it feel like a shorter replay? In the case of Ultra Kill, no. In fact, it wants you to replay levels to find secrets and get more battle points to unlock a gun upgrades. Fuck, fuck, fuck. After that rant, let me cool down for a little while while I talk about a medieval. I feel like out of the New Blood trilogy, this one is the most underrated. It's closer to Hexen and Heretic in style with a medieval sort of feel to it. Almost all the weapons are magic melee weapons, so for instance, early on you'll get the Whisper's Edge, a sword that shoots green slashes, and after that you'll get the Voltride, a trident that shoots lightning. But there's some staves as well, namely the Staff of the Azure Orb, which shoots bubbles, and the Celestial Claw, which shoots shrunken planets. There's also this thing. It's the BFG of the game. This is all made even cooler by the fact that when you kill an enemy, they'll drop a soul, which when picked up will fill your soul meter. When that is maxed out, you can enter soul mode, which completely changes how every single weapon works. That celestial claw, it shoots whole ass stars now. Voltride, it shoots a constant beam of lightning. You get the point. Couple all this with the honestly beautiful environments, you can get something I feel more people should appreciate. And now the final game to talk about, 
Old Granddaddy Dusk. What can I say that hasn't been said before? This game is a modern day classic and revitalized the boomer shooter genre, which before its release was really struggling. To me, Dusk is to the present as Quake was to the past, an adrenaline filled monster killing bloodbath. The guns are all just so solid and nothing, I mean nothing can beat this game's super shotgun noise. Stop it. Oh. Dual pistols, dual shotguns, an SSG, assault rifle, crossbow, hunting rifle, mortar launcher, the all holy rivet gun will carry you through 30 levels of backwoods horror done right. I will personally never forget the wake up noises of some of these monsters, like the Leathernecks breathing or the cultists chanting. Kill it. This is boomer shooter perfection, in my eyes at least. And that's my boomer shooter tier list. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say in the comments, whether you agree with me or think I'm a stupid fucking idiot who should have put Doom 1 in S tier. Do subscribe, it's a big dopamine rush to my chimpish brain, and I'll see you in the next one.